Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to look at the Motor Control Design Suite. So to get to the Motor Control Design Suite, up to the Design Suites, Motor Control, and we'll grab this one, the PMSM drive, which is the most simplest version of it. Uh, we can zoom out on this. This is a, it'll run right out of the box, so just click Run Simulation, and away we go. Um, and we've got some results popping up over here. So we've got three phase currents, IDIQ, speed versus the reference and develop torque of the machine. Uh, torque is on the uh, right hand axis here. We can see the control response here of IQ and IQ ref. So let's have a little look at more at the simulation. This is the simplest version of field orientated control. We've got two current feedbacks, so assuming symmetry. We've got one speed feedback over here and we're doing an inner current loop and outer speed loop. Uh, with space vector PWM being implemented. So how do the values for the control get done? Well, let's look at the left-hand side here. So this is a template which derives its values from this left-hand wizard. Uh, so we put 500 volts for the DC bus, switching speed, maximum current for the inverter. We've got the load. Uh, the motor model is a simple linear model uh, in the DQ frame. We've got the motor controller down here as well. I'd like to highlight that we can simulate a separate switching speed versus a separate execution rate for the current loop and a different execution rate for the speed loop. And then we define cross frequencies for the current controller and the speed controller. So a good rule of thumb is one tenth of those. So a decade below the, the execution rate of those loops. Then we click update parameter file and essentially all that information gets pushed to the parameter file in here. And we also see the calculation of the control values for D and Q down here. Okay, so again, this is the most simple form and let's look at a more complex form in a bit more detail. So we'll look at the IPM one at the top here. Again, unpack. This is now very similar. We can run this simulation again and this one has the same kind of input wizard on the left-hand side, except now this one is implementing uh, a little bit more of a complex control algorithm. So we've got ID and IQ, we'll pull all those up and we'll grab uh, the developed torque and the shaft speed, uh, plot that up there. And then I also wanna plot the flag here. So what this one is doing is it's implementing max torque per amp control at the very beginning, field weakening during this acceleration portion here, and then we've got max torque per volt control uh, as we continue heading towards uh, steady state speed, and then we go back to field weakening at, at, uh, up here once we hit steady state speed. So all this gets implemented automatically for us. If we come to the control algorithm here, we see this block automatically implements our field weakening and, and switches between them. Uh, senses the DC bus voltage over here. And then we have the current controller here as well. Again, we can double click and we see the current control blocks being defined here. Uh, and again, we've got our uh, system. Uh, and again, the same kind of wizard on the side here, we put in all our values, we click update parameter file, and then this will again, calculate values for us based on our uh, desired inputs. Uh, you will have to run the simulation to make sure that it's stable. The other fun thing here is the speed torque curve. So we can click this button and this will give us the torque versus speed characteristics and the power versus speed characteristics. This is really handy uh, to see what kind of performance characteristics you get with the inverter involved. So say if we change the DC bus voltage 400 and we uh, redo the speed torque curve, we see uh, power here and the old power is right here we can see right away that there's a change as a reflection of that change in DC bus voltage on the, our power envelope. Okay, so that's uh, those ones. Now, also in the design suite is uh, links to flux and flux motor. Let's look at the flux model for a second. This is quite fun. This gives us the losses from the machine now. You can couple that with the loss model from PSIM to give you a drive efficiency map. Uh, and if we pull up the results from this one, we can see the developed torque, we see the spatial harmonics in that, and we also see uh, that we are using a nonlinear LD and LQ. This is really fun as well. We can see that this is changing as a function of uh, the operating state of the machine, 
And if we come down to the controller here, um, this is where that LD and LQ come in. So we, we originally derive a nominal PI controller based on these LD and LQ values. And then you can see here that it gets scaled by LD and LQ. Uh, and that gets comes from the lookup table right here for what LD and LQ will be for that controller. Um, yeah, so this is a really interesting model. And if you look again back in the wizard in the in the menu, there's designs for SPMs, uh, flex motor flux and JMAG cosims uh, for the motor model. Torque control uh, is a fairly good idea to do efficiency maps. Uh, they're faster simulations as you get to set the shaft speed and then just hit the hit a set point on the torque. There's some sensorless uh, ex uh, design suites here, and then there's the induction motor drive down the bottom here. Okay, so that's it for this video. Again, punch in your values here, click update parameter file, and off you go. Thanks so much for watching.